Hey guys, so what we're going to talk about today is um, the answer to a question. What is history? So first, I want you to kind of think in your own mind, how would you answer that question if I asked you, what is this subject we're going to study? And um, I'll tell you that a lot of people have this knee-jerk reaction in which they define history as a collection of dates and names. And I'm going to tell you as well that I have a knee-jerk reaction of wanting to throat punch them <laughs> because history is not just dates and names. In fact, this is very important, a very important part of this discipline, but it is probably the most simplistic part. So let me kind of say, uh, to illustrate this point, D-Day, right? This is a big event during World War II. Uh, let's throw down some dates and names, um, or a date. This takes place on June 6, 1944. And um, some names, the Allied powers are going to be overseen by Dwight D. Eisenhower. You're gonna have three different countries have soldiers storming the beaches of Normandy, France. Those three different countries are the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. Um, they are going to land in Normandy, and then they are going to try to advance towards Germany. They're going to have to fight a bunch of Germans who are going to be led by a fellow named Erwin Rommel. Um, and there you go. We got some, we got a date, we got some names, we got some countries. Uh, you feel as if you know everything you need to know about D-Day? If you do, then you need to reconsider because you don't know Jack. You know uh, less than what you might learn from a Wikipedia page. So, and that's not a lot. You know enough to maybe do okay in a pub quiz about World War II because, you know, you can pull June 6, 1944 out without the Google, okay? Ah, uh, mm. Pub quizzes are good. In fact, I love them. But a pub quiz is about trivia and we're going to engage with history. So how would we do that in conjunction with D-Day? Well, um, we'd start asking bigger questions, not just the date of when it happened and some of the major players. We would say, oh, why did it happen? <laughs> why did it happen on June 6th? What, what was going on in the world? What was the broader context? Why was this an important event? I know it's the biggest amphibious landing that's ever been planned in history, but why did they approach France that way? Uh, if the leaders had been different, if it hadn't been Dwight Eisenhower, would the outcome have gone a different way? Um, what were the men who were on the launching crafts thinking as they stepped into the water with these giant packs like you might see in a movie like Saving Private Ryan. What, what were the Germans on the other side thinking as you had this wave of people coming onto the beaches? Um, who was good and who was bad in this particular contest of belligerence? Um, what is good? What is bad? How do we define those things? What do we mean by them? I mean, I think we can probably all agree the Nazis were bad, but were all Germans Nazis? And by the way, why were the Nazis confused that you had capitalist countries allying with a communist power in the Soviet Union to fight against fascism, which was uh, opposed to communism, even though kind of related to it? These are all really good questions. They're the whys, the hows. That's what makes up history. That's why Gordon S. Wood, a great historian of the early U.S. Republic, calls history the queen of the humanities. It's all about critical thinking and interpretation and really trying to understand the actors of the past and what their actions lead to. It's kind of like interpreting uh, a crime scene, really. I mean, not that history is a crime, like some history, there are crimes within history, but 
like it's like being a detective, being a historian. Um, if you've ever streamed one of those shows, one of those reality shows, like uh, the first 48, for example, and you've got a woman and she calls 911, she's like, yo, you need to come because I hear gunshots in the alley. And then the police come and the next thing you see is uh, th these people converging upon the alley and where they find a, a man dead. And then the real big questions start. Like, why is there a dead man in the alley? How did he get there to begin with? We know he's shot, we know about what time he dies, but we can probably look in his wallet and know his name, but that's, that's all we got. Now we've got to look at the evidence and figure out the bigger questions. And these bigger questions are probably gonna be argued about in, in a trial. Um, historians argue about how they interpret evidence. Historians say, well, this is why that matters. No, 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 that's why that matters. Well, this is what that means. No, 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 that is what that means. And actually you have this interesting thing happen when you have a whole bunch of historians arguing with one another, you create something in the discipline that we call historiography. Okay, there's a nice little college term for you. Historiography is the synthesis of ideas about particular schools of history, schools of thought, okay? Um, Gordon S. Wood, for example, has contributed the, the historiography of the early republic for the United States. Uh, he's considered one of the preeminent historians of that. Um, this makes me think of something else though. Just because you have an expert on the stand in a trial, does that mean that you just say, oh gosh, you know what you're talking about? Check, yes, guilty, evidence, as you presented it is exactly what happened, tells me everything? No. Historians come at things with um, a lot of knowledge and they interpret things uh, in educated manners. But again, they, these experts don't always agree and they have to make their case. And sometimes they're just flat out wrong. And then you learn new things and you revise. You revise the story in the history, if that makes sense, right? Um, so this is, you know, again, the queen of the humanities, very tied to critical thinking. Uh, another thing about history, why does it matter? Well, if you understand the past, you will have a better grasp on the present. Now that does not mean that you can look at the present and engage in something called presentism. What is presentism? Hmm. That's when you take your own cultural context and you impose it on the past, or you go to the past, you wanna prove a point, so you go to the past and you cherry pick what you find there, kind of like a bad detective who enters onto a crime scene with preconceived notions about what happens and then is gonna prove he is absolutely certain that the person who killed the guy in the alley was uh, the mistress because he doesn't even need to look at the other uh, possible suspects. He knows that maybe his wife had an affair on him. And so he, he knows, he knows how passionate people can get when people cheat. I don't know. People have all kinds of biases like that and they have to guard against them and they can't take the present and look at the evidence of the past and make a story if they're engaged in good mm -hmm. history. Okay, so I want you to ponder again, what is history? How would you answer that question? And um, why, why is it different from learning trivia? Why does it matter? What, what is the point of you learning about the past that is over and done with? Hmm. I'll talk to you soon, bye.